Hello everyone, welcome back to Retrocoms. In this episode, we're going to be talking about a name that is almost synonymous with the early 2000s, and that name is Nokia. They have made some of the most durable phones in this period of time. And although I don't have the meme-worthy legendary Nokia 3310 right here, I do have some of its cousins, if you will. Here are the 3587i, the 6010, and the 1261. All three of these phones seem to be very durable devices and seem to have the features of the time. Let's take a look at these devices. First up is the 3587. We can definitely tell what time period it's from because of this transparent plastic on the side. That stuff was on everything from game controllers to landline phones. And up here, we have either a 2.5 or 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. I'm guessing a 2.5 since that was more common back then, but I'm not too sure. I haven't tried to plug my headset into it. Down here on the bottom, we have a coaxial charging port along with a proprietary connector of some sort. On this side, nothing but the extendable antenna. And here on the back, a removable battery cover, which also acts as the face plates for the phone, which can be removed, as was standard with Nokia during this period of time for enhanced customization of the phone. And if you'll notice something else, something that might have occurred to you in my previous videos, this phone has a dedicated power button up top like some of the other handsets I've, I've shown you guys. Um, they didn't turn on by just pressing the end button, as with phones that, that came later in this period. They had to be powered on by pressing this power button up top, a dedicated power button. You'll find that on all three of these Nokia handsets that we'll review today. Now I'll come on over to the 6010. It too has the transparent plastic and removable face plates. This time I'll do a little demonstration for you. As you can see here, the back comes off easily. And if you just gently pull at the front, you can see it's starting to come away here, revealing the button membrane and the LCD panel. And it's back on easy as that. These were meant to come off. Something else you might find familiar about this phone is the singular SIM card. This phone is definitely GSM. It can probably still be used on AT&T since AT&T bought out singular in the mid 2000s. So if you want to use an old phone like this, it's best to go with the GSM variant. It's more likely to work on modern carriers. I'll talk more about the carriers later on. Going around the phone more, we see this same coaxial port, two little terminals of some kind, some other little port here, not quite sure. Might be the headphone jack. I think it is, because I can't find the headphone jack elsewhere on the device. And there's its speaker, and singular logo down at the bottom. And we start seeing on these two phones the directional pads that are common on phones of this time. Now we'll come on over to the 1261. It is the oldest model of these three, I believe, and it appears to have had more wear. I don't think the buttons came from the factory this golden color. I think this was due to heavy use. Maybe it, from it being talked on next to a sweaty ear during the summer or something. I don't really want to think about it, but don't worry, I clean up all these phones. I at least give it a good wipe down, but this, this golden color wouldn't come away from my preliminary wipes. This is a clean phone. I don't, I don't touch things that are covered in germs. I try to keep my phone sanitized. And here we see, similar to the 6010, the coaxial connector, the two little terminals, the 2.5 millimeter headphone jack, the battery cover is removable, but not the face plates. If I can get this battery cover off on camera, this is the hardest of the three to remove, but there it goes. 
And a neat little feature on this device is the battery, if I can show you guys, pops out with this little lip. And there we are. Now I don't see the SIM card in this one. I'm not sure where the slot for the SIM is on this device. But we don't really need to look for the SIM at this point since we're not trying to activate it on a modern network today. But it is a singular device, so it should have a SIM card slot somewhere in here. These being Nokia phones, though, at some point, we've got to connect them to a charger and see if we can play a game of Snake or hear that iconic Nokia ringtone. I'm sure at least one of these highly robust phones still works even after all this time. All right, everyone, let's have a look at this 3587i. First, we'll connect the coax charger to this port down here. And we should see a little message, power off battery charging. Not sure how well you guys can make that out on the screen here. Let's press the power button and see if she'll turn on for us. There we go. Simple Freedom is apparently the provider. Tells us hello up there. Someone must have set that as the greeting message. And the banner up here is Nokia 3587i. Well, it looks like it knows its name. On the soft keys here, or menu and contacts, I'm gonna go into menu. I wanna get into their personal information. Looks like our options are messages, call log, profiles, settings, gallery, system, voice, mini browser, organizer, app download, keypad, and we're back to messages. Well, let's see if we can adjust a few settings here in profiles. Huh. Jimmy, Tracy, normal, and silent. And back to Tracy. Huh, apparently these were the previous owner's names or something. Let's see if we can customize the profile. Ringing options, ringing tone, ringing volume, and vibrating alert. Message alert tone, keypad tone, warning tones, alert for all calls, name of the profile, and now we're back to ringing options. Let's adjust the volume, because I'm afraid level five is probably gonna be a little bit too loud. Go with level four seems all right. Now let's check out the ringtones on here.
Now we're back to where we started. Interesting ringtones that they had on there. Uh, I could see that Nokia must have had an affinity for classical music or whoever was putting the ringtones on the phones or selecting which ones would go on there. Mozart's 40th, Valkyries, things like that, though they're common, are technically classical, if my knowledge is correct. I'm just a phone collector, not a music analyst or music specialist in any form. But it's an interesting choice of ringtones either way. I've apparently got the screen time, out, time set pretty quick. It, the display dimmed on me very fast, as you can see. Probably to conserve battery. Might have been one of the main reasons the batteries lasted so long. And from what I saw with this menu, it can open and receive text messages, and it can also download apps. It would be interesting to see what the earliest phone that could download apps was, because apparently when this was out, that was becoming a thing. Especially with the mini browser too, it started to be the time when smartphones were slowly making their way towards the mainstream. So this is maybe a newer phone than I thought. thought it was earlier 2000s. This seems more mid-2000s. But since it can download apps, I wonder if Snake is on here. Well, it doesn't have any other apps. Maybe... No, not in the gallery. Well, we'll have to look around on the other phones and see if we can find it. This cable seems a bit glitchy, too. I might have to replace it soon. I've had these phones for a good little while. Three or four years, I believe. Well, let's shut this one off and move on to the next one. There it goes. Goodbye, it says. But no fear. We've got two more phones that we need to look at. Let's check them out. Here we have the Nokia 6010. Now, similar to the other phones, it has a coaxial charging connector. So I'll plug this up. Gave us a little beep. No notification on the screen. Or at least not one that's that visible. You might not be able to see in this light, but there is a charging indicator here on the side. that shows the battery and little battery indicator going up. Let's see if it'll power on. There it is. Bright little screen it has here. What was the time and date? I'm not going to bother with any of that. And similarly to the first phone I showed you guys, menu and contacts. Now, again, don't know if I factory reset this thing or not, so I'm not going to take a chance with contacts. Instead, let's just go into the menu. Messages, call log, profiles, settings, gallery, organizer, games, applications, extras, connectivity, services, and I am. Let's go back up to extras. Calculator, stopwatch, voice commands. Interesting. This phone seems to be a bit more feature rich, but I don't see, well, there's applications. I don't see a browser, but it does have I am. Let's see if we have any games. Skydiver, Airglide, Backgammon, and Bowling. No Snake. That's sad. It's Nokia. I thought it was supposed to have Snake. That's, that's one of their... It's one of their signatures. So... See what applications it has. Ah, Unit Converter. That would have been a handy feature to have if you were dealing in some sort of scientific field. Overall, it seems to be a bit more refined than the last phone I showed you, but 
It's a bit smaller too, which can be a good thing, can be a bad thing. The screen's brighter, seems to have a, a bit of, of a higher resolution. Not sure what sort of images are on here or anything like that. So, but the icons seem to be more vivid. Overall, it seems to have held up well, and even if I remove the charger, it still comes on. Oh. Let's try that. Seems to have held up well. Even if I remove the charger, it still stays on. So the battery is still working, and not like the micro tax and things like that that I've shown you before. And you'll notice with all these phones, it's lacking something that we've deemed to be a key feature on modern phones, a camera. Now, it could receive images, possibly through MMS or maybe some other forms of downloading from a browser, but other than that, it could not capture images. Well, let's check out the other phone on our list and then wrap this up. Last but not least, we have the 1261. Now, a small problem with it is that this little rubber power button is missing. But, no problem. Just reach in, and press it, and there it goes. It's a singular phone, as you can see. Maybe the previous owner's name was K. Interesting. It's got the menu and names feature. Probably similar ringtones to the other Nokia phones that I've shown you guys. But, let's go have a look through the menus. Seems a little bit slow. Messages. Call log. Profiles. Settings. System, games, and back to messages. Let's see about games. Maybe the legend itself is on here. Snake 2. Let's try it. See the instructions before I play this. It's been a while. Make the snake grow longer by directing it to the food. Use the keys 2, 4, 6, and 8. You cannot snap, stop the snake or make it go backward. Try not to hit the walls or the tail. Seems pretty self-explanatory. Let's see what I've got. If this soft key will register my press. Ah, it's a little laggy. This might not end well for me, but we can try. Apparently two is up. Four is left. Six should be right. Oh, goodness. Okay, apparently I have to hit two again, maybe. It's a little bit tricky. go finally got one
like I'm on track to get another. This snake moves rather slow. proof that I can play snake on this thing. It still seems to work pretty well. It's a little bit laggy, but the legendary snake game is there. And that's an experience that can't be replicated on modern phones. It just goes to show you, with each generation of technology, and with each generation in general, there's something gained and something lost. But this little phone seems to have stood the test of time. Let's power it off. I'm also impressed that this battery was able to take it off the charger to do this. And it's off. Stayed on for a good little while though. I'm, I'm very impressed. Now, let's go back and get all these phones together and see which one would have been my daily driver if I were to have used a Nokia device at this time. Alright everyone. So the moment you've all been waiting for, would I have used these phones at the time they were released? Well, the best answer I can give you is maybe. It would have just depended on what other options my carrier had and exactly what I wanted the phone for. Now, this one was released somewhere between 99 and 2002 according to a bit of research I've done. These two were released in 2004. Now, between these times, there were a lot of phones that were a bit more compact, a bit more feature rich, had cameras, USB data transfer was becoming a thing. Now, I don't think there were full on smartphones at this point. Maybe, maybe Blackberry was developing their handsets around the time these two were out, but this one was very advanced for his time, and I'd consider an upgrade from the StarTac. So, I might have used this one between 99 and 2002, but these, honestly, if there was a more feature-rich phone out there, say, a clamshell of sorts, I've always had a soft spot for clamshells. I might have used one of those instead, but at the same time, they feel very robust. A little plasticky, but hey, they're, they are made of plastic, but they do it well. They don't feel cheap. They feel very good in the hand. This one has the highest resolution screen. This one seemed to have a few more features, I would think. And this one was released earlier and had Snake. Now, even though I'm not the best at Snake, I, it would have been nice to, to have Snake to play, say, in the waiting room at an office or somewhere like that where I had a little bit of free time to waste and nowhere else to be, nothing else to do just sit down and play Snake. But there were other games available on phones. But they have this design that is unmistakably Nokia. So if I needed something that was durable and rugged, yet still easy to hold in the hand, still had a few features of the time, I probably would have gone with one of these. Now, speaking of clamshells of the era, I know I normally give you guys a sneak peek, but that's what I'll be talking about next. 
clamshells at around the same time period as these phones between 2000 and 2004. I have a few, but not many from, from that time. But the next few videos, we're gonna get into the, to the Motorola Razor family, the Blackberries, and even beyond that, Samsung, LG. See what the other manufacturers were producing at this time, because at this point, the two main players in the phone market or the two most widely known were Motorola and Nokia were the main two phones you would have. But I'd like to show you guys some more pre-camera phones, if you will. Well, that's all I've got for today. Uh, be sure to check out Rift Valley SoundCloud, link in the description as always. And thank you guys so much for watching. Retrocoms, signing off.